Hi, Chef Diane here from Farm Box Kids. Ready to cook along with you again. I'm so excited to cook along one of my favorite things, one of my family's favorite things, and that is quesadillas. And to top it off, it's a challenge today. So we're gonna have a challenge and the ability to use our creativity to put our own spin on your favorite quesadilla. So um, we're gonna learn about the secrets to the best quesadilla, and then you're gonna be able to put your own creative spin on it by adding on your in your add-ons. So we do this challenge every week in our kids' camp because it's a way to use all the skills that you've learned all week long, use your creativity, cook without a recipe, which if you do want the recipe, it is posted on the Facebook Kids Cook Along page. You can reference that recipe in case anything happens with broadcasting. You can go ahead and follow along with the recipe, but I'm crossing my fingers. I'll be with you the whole time this time, and um, we'll be able to cook along together. Please, as you check in, say hello. Tell me what you're putting inside your quesadillas. Let me show you what you're gonna need to um, have for your quesadillas in order to get started. All right, so in order to get started, we're gonna need, of course, tortillas. So use your own favorite tortillas. I'm using an organic flour tortilla. They're a little bit smaller than what I'd normally wanna use, but I um, that's all I could find in the store. So they're perfect for me. Um, you could use corn, you could use ones that are not cooked, they're already raw, so you have to toast them up on the on the pan a little bit. We can talk about that later. Um, you can use a wheat blend, whatever, gluten-free if you like, whatever kind of tortillas that you wanna use. Then of course, you're gonna need some cheese. So today I'm using mild cheddar and Monterey Jack, because that's what my daughter likes. Hi, Bianca, I'm so happy to see that Lola and Louisa are here. I've got E watching today. I've got the White family, Gabriel's on, Courtney and Amanda. Let me know what kind of cheese you're using, what kind of tortillas you're using, what kind of add-ins. If anything, you don't have to do any of the add-ins at all. Um, I'd love to hear from you today. So I've got cheddar and jack cheese. I have my organic flour tortillas. And the last thing I need is just butter or vegetable oil. Now, olive oil isn't recommended because it doesn't have a high smoke point. So you'll see here, this avocado oil goes high heat to 500 degrees. That means that it's not going to burn um, if I get it to a high heat. Now, butter will burn a little bit. There's um, solids that are brown that'll brown up in it. Um, but olive oil is like about a 350 degree um, heat. So just preferable to use a um, high heat olive oil. And I wanna say hi to some of my friends that are checking in. I've got um, Silas and Dominic and we're cooking along with them today. Um, Julie, the Harrison girls are using Colby Jack and cheddar. I looked for Colby Jack. I wanted that too, because I like that cool um, kind of mottled orange and white thing going on with Colby Jack, but I couldn't find it. So, you know, right now we're just cooking with whatever we have in our pantry, whatever we can find at the store. Um, so that's all you need. High heat olive oil, tortillas, good cheese that you like. That's important. You got to like it. And then add-ins. So my add-ins today are canned corn. So um, also um, Aaron's family is using canned corn and black beans, and they're they're putting onions in it too. That's a smart choice. Now the onions, I would cook them in a separate pan before you put them in, unless they're green onions, then you can just put them in um, raw. So um, I've got Bella watching today. Hi, Bella. Um, Tiffany's uh, daughter Ely is using a blend of Monterey Jack and cheddar and asadero. That's very fancy, very um, Latin. So. I'm using corn and beans. I'm gonna show you when to put them into the quesadilla. And then I'm also gonna do a topper. You don't have to do a topper, or maybe you have a jar of salsa or some sour cream or something that you'd like to add on top, or just sliced avocados, whatever you'd like to add on top. But I am going to add guacamole. So we made guacamole a few weeks ago. Fresh avocados, lemon, salt and pepper is all you need for that if you wanna throw in some um, garlic powder, you could put on bar garlic powder or fresh garlic, or you could chop up a green onion or cilantro, what have you. Um, but 
it's your choice and it's your creativity. And after everything's done, I want to see your picture. I want to see how beautiful you made your food look because we eat with our eyes. So when we see that gorgeous food on the plate, it makes us just want to take a big delicious bite. Okay, so I've got um, Isla here and I've got um, um, Ayla. <laughs> Ayla and Isla are on. And Gabriel is making pizza quesadillas. I also have Charlotte. Hi, Charlotte. She's making turkey corn, black beans, Colby and Monterey Jack. That sounds so delicious. Yeah, so we've got some really great creative choices here. Let's go ahead and get started with grating our cheese. Now, the one of the keys to a delicious, cheesy, crispy, gooey quesadilla that you just want to open up and you're gonna get that big cheese spread, just like our grilled cheese sandwiches, is grating your own cheese. So when you buy grated cheese at the store, it comes with a starch coating on it that doesn't make it as melty. So we talked about that when we did our grilled cheese sandwiches. So if you have a block of cheese, go ahead and start grating it while we talk about the other secrets to the most delicious quesadilla that you can make. So when you grate your cheese, you use the big side of the grater and just press down, watch your fingers. You can grate it into a bowl, you can grate it onto a cutting board. All right, Ayla's making, or Ayla's making jalapeno, I'm sorry, it's Ayla, jalapeno cheese and turkey. That sounds like a perfect lunch to me. So grating your cheese, take your time. That's the first secret to a delicious quesadilla, the best quesadilla ever. Um, is grating your own cheese. So get that going, your choice of cheese. The other secret is only use a little bit of oil. So I'm gonna show you in a minute what you want your pan to look like when you are oiling it up for a quesadilla because many people make the mistake of putting a lot of butter on, a lot of oil on, and that just makes your quesadilla greasy. And those are two words you don't wanna go have go together. Greasy and quesadilla should never go together in the same sentence. Um, so we're gonna just put a smidge, half a teaspoon to a quarter teaspoon of oil in our pan. But first I'm gonna give you guys some time to grate your cheese and grating cheese is fun. I think it's very therapeutic. And all you need is about a cup, depending on the size of your, your tortillas. So each quesadilla is gonna get about a quarter cup. We're gonna make four quesadillas, so you need about a cup of cheese, but if you have bigger, tortillas, then you're gonna make more cheese. And we always have a chance to come back and grate more if we need it. But right now I think I have enough um, cheese. How about you guys? Are you guys doing okay on your cheese? All right, I love these choices that we're making. Now we're gonna turn on our heat. So you're gonna have an adult turn the heat on of your pan and you're going to get that pan nice and hot. So that's number two, secrets to the best quesadilla ever. Nice and hot pan and only a little bit of oil. So let me show you what my pan looks like. I just put a little bit of oil and I used a brush to brush it through, but you could just roll it around. So in order to get your oil ready, if you like, if you feel more confident using a measuring spoon to put it on. I would start with a half of a teaspoon of oil. And then if that is enough to coat your pan, then you can just stay with a half a teaspoon of oil. If you think that the pan looks dry and you wanna add a little bit more, then you're gonna add a little bit more. So just a little, start with a half. Put it on the pan. And then you just roll it around until it, and if it's butter, you just put the butter on there and you do the same thing. You just pick the pan up and roll it around until it's all spread out. I used a brush. This is a pastry brush. It's not a like a paintbrush. So pastry brush is really important because if you use a any other kind of brush, the the um, brush might melt as you melt as you brush along. So. We're heating it up. We're gonna heat it up just like when we saute. We heat it until we can feel the heat radiating, radiating up through the pan. Now, while it's heating up, if you wanna just kind of manage your time, what you can do is you can start making your 
um, fillings if you have to chop onions or if you're um, chopping cilantro you can start pulling the stems the the leaves off the cilantro stems and then chopping them up and um, I could just give you a little reminder I'll take the cheese out of the way a little reminder of how to chop so um, you want to make sure that you hold your um, left hand if you're right-handed you hold your left hand so your fingers curl up and you put it onto the top of the knife you don't grab the blade and then you just rock the knife up and down back and forth through the food um, so it'll just be a little pile here and you just go up and down in a v so you cut in this zone right here chopping through until it's the consistency that you want i've got some people saying hello Hi, Louise. Um, so now the pan has been heating. It's got the oil on it. You are um, getting ready to start your quesadilla. Rule number three is pan has to be nice and hot. So we wanna make sure that when the tortilla hits the pan, it's creating a barrier that will make it crispy, but not soak into the tortilla and make it soggy. So just hold your hand about two inches over the top of the pan. And then that tortilla is gonna land right in the middle of the pan when you feel like it's ready. So there's my tortilla. Now you might have a bigger one. Like I said, this is a smaller tortilla. Let me see, it doesn't say how many inches this are. I think this is like an eight inch tortilla, but you might have a 12 inch tortilla. Make sure you have a big enough pan for it. So it should be like a 12 inch skillet, um, nice hot heat um, and you're gonna look for some toastiness to happen here. Okay, rule number four for the successful, most delicious quesadilla is you cheese your whole tortilla, but you top only the half. So I'm gonna take about a quarter cup of my cheese blend. So here's my cheese blend. Let me fluff it up a little bit. So you can see, like if you get a, get a bag of cheese, it's not, it's all fluffy. It doesn't sink down because it has a coating on it that makes it um, um, hold better in the bag. So that's why grating your own cheese is gonna make it ooey gooey, cheesy, toasty, delicious. When we put our cheese on, we put the whole, cover the whole tortilla with the cheese, about a quarter cup. If that's what, um, if you like the measurements, um, it's gonna look about like a handful is a quarter cup. When you spread your cheese on your skillet, make sure you just hit the tortilla and not the skillet or else you're gonna get some burned cheese bits, which are okay for now, but when you make your second quesadilla, it's gonna affect the way your second quesadilla looks. So just like when we made crepes, the first and the seconds and the thirds and the fourths always turn out differently. So here I have my cheese. It's all over my tortilla. And then I'm gonna add in about a quarter cup, again, a handful of toppings. But I'm only gonna put it on one half of the quesadilla. So I'm gonna take this quesadilla, I'm gonna visually divide it into half, and one side gets the topping. Now why is that? Because when you're making anything that's stuffed or rolled, less is more. The more you put in, the more stuff falls out, you lose it, you create a mess, it's hard to cut, it's hard to eat, it's hard to handle. So just take your toppings, about a quarter cup, and you're going to just cover half of it. And if a quarter cup isn't enough, grab a little bit more of your toppings. It could be shredded meat, pulled, like pulled pork or a roast chicken, or um, it could be ground turkey, it could be sausage, that would be delicious. Um, hey, you could even make a whole breakfast quesadilla. I think I'm gonna need a little bit more corn. So here we go. So you can see I divided this visually in half because I'm gonna fold it over. So here is half of it filled with my add-ins. If you don't want add-ins, that's okay. You can just do in one big cheesy uh, melty quesadilla just like this. And once I start to see the cheese melt, and this is key, so listen up. You see the cheese melt, that's when you peek underneath and see what's going on with the browning. If it's browning too fast, then you need to turn your heat down 
If it's browning too slowly, maybe you just wanna give it a little bit of a bump. So let me see, I've got my spatula here. Whenever I am working with a pan, I wanna make sure I hold onto the handle and then I'm gonna peek underneath. And I'm not getting a whole lot of browning here, but my cheese is melting. So I'm just gonna wait. I'm gonna just gonna be patient and wait for that golden, cheesy, crispy crust to happen. Um, and while I'm doing that, and by the way, did everyone remember to wash their hands? Because I forgot to give you the reminder at the start of the video, and maybe even after you handle your cheese and put it in your quesadilla, you might wanna give your hands a good hand washing. So while you're waiting for that crispy golden brown crust to happen, the next thing you could do is think about your toppings. So again, if you like toppings, start start with them. I'm gonna just run through a tutorial of how we do guacamole. And we've done guacamole, uh, I think it was our first class we did guacamole, but it's a great uh, no recipe recipe to remember. Uh, you can use it for the rest of your life. You're gonna make guacamole for your family, your friends, everyone loves guacamole. Starting with ripe avocado, you're gonna look and make sure that it, it has a little bit of green when you take the stem out. Then you're gonna hold your, um, your avocado on the board, and I'll move this so you can see what I'm doing. Hold it on the board. You're gonna do the same thing with your fingers as when you're holding a knife. Fingers curl up, and you're gonna cut sideways halfway through. So your cut is gonna look like this. Halfway through the avocado till you hit the pit, and when you hit the pit, you rotate it around the knife all the way until it's cut. So I've got to cut all the way around here and then I'm just gonna turn it, ooh, turn it and crack it open. Now I have one side that has a pit, one side that doesn't have a pit. Let me just check my quesadilla and tell me how your quesadillas are working out too. Because as soon as they're brown, I'm gonna show you what the next step is. So mine is getting a little bit golden brown. The cheese is melting. So after the cheese melts and you see that golden brown color, then you're gonna take the side that has the cheese on it and fold it over the side that, does, that has the, the add-ins on it. So you're just gonna take it and divide it into half so it's gonna be a half circle. So you just fold it over with your, case of, with your spatula and then you just give it a little pat. Just to bring it all together. So there we go. I wanna see what the other side looks like, so I'm gonna flip mine over. Okay, so that to me looks like it's almost toasty enough and cheesy enough and I can feel with my spatula that I've got a good crust on here. So we're gonna go ahead and continue to make four quesadillas. And just a reminder, these classes are designed to be 30 minutes or less because you got other things going on in your life. 30 minutes or less, get your lunch together, a snack together, um, to focus on cooking is just enough time, I think. So a little bit more toasting. And then when you're finished toasting, you can pull it off and cut it into wedges. All right, so I've got Zoe, Mackenzie, and Donna on. Um, I'm so happy to see you guys. Let me know how your quesadillas are going. Have you made your first quesadilla yet? So here's what it looks like when you're done. It's got, it's folded in half. It's got a nice golden brown crust. You can see my cheese is ooey gooey melted. My toppings are, my add-ins are staying on. And then I'm just gonna cut it into wedges. So um, you can cut it into strips or wedges, however you like. So here's what my wedge is gonna look like. This would be really pretty with some fresh cilantro inside. I think that's what the Jocelyn girls are making today. Green onions would be nice. So here we go. Oh, I lost some of my add-ins, but there's my ooey gooey quesadilla. Now a tip for the next quesadilla that you make, don't add as much oil because you've already got a super hot pan and you already have enough, a little bit of oil from the previous quesadilla. So I'm just gonna put in like, oh, a quarter teaspoon of oil. And remember you can either roll it around or you can brush it on. And my pan's really hot now, so I know this is gonna go a little bit faster this second time around, just like our crepes did. 
So this is kind of, like, it's kind of a combination between crepes and grilled cheese sandwiches that we made. I just knock off my add-ins that fell out. Got our, our tortilla going down. We've got cheese all over. So remember the cheese goes all over the tortilla, but not all over the pan. Or else you're gonna end up with some crispy, crusty cheese. I'm saying, I'm saying like I'm using a little over a quarter cup for this size quesadilla. So you might use a half a cup. As the cheese is melting, we've got only on half of the quesadilla. Half the quesadilla gets your add-ins. You could make a breakfast quesadilla with some scrambled eggs, bacon, whatever kind of cheese you like. You can make it Mediterranean style with some tomatoes and goat cheese. There's so many different options. That's what I love about quesadillas that they really can encourage you to be creative. While that's melting, I still have my topper that I'm gonna make, which is a fresh guacamole. So we got our uh, avocados cut in half. One side has a pit. This is something an adult um, will want to show you or work with you on first, um, especially if you're under eight years old. But when you when you cut the pit out of an avocado, you can either squeeze it out if the avocado is ripe enough, or you can use your knife. Now the hand that is not holding the knife is going to stay up in the air. Do not hold your avocado piece when you're when you're doing this. You hold the hand up the air. You take your knife and you gently thunk it into the um, avocado. So you can see I stuck it with my knife. Now I'm going to twist it. Oh, I got to stick it again because it didn't take. Twist it and it comes off. Then you take a towel and you remove it from your knife. So that's a safe way to get the pit out of your avocado. You never hold it while you're taking it out. You never hold your avocado, cut it in half. It's always going to stay down on your board. All right. So now we're working a little bit more quickly with that second quesadilla. And I've got some beautiful golden brown color, even prettier than the first one, because that's kind of what happens with, um, like we said, with our crepes, with our grilled cheeses, like you just kind of test out the first one. And then um, the second and third ones and fourth ones are gonna be more and more perfect. But I wanna get a little bit more color on there. So I'm gonna continue with my guacamole. So with the, um, with the guacamole, you're gonna take your avocado, put it down on the board, and draw some lines up and down on your avocado. So I've got some lines up and down. This would be a slice. If I took it out of the, if I took it out of the uh, skin, it would be sliced. But I want to dice it, so I'm going to turn it the other way. And now I have a diced avocado, which I'm going to remove with a spoon. So here I have avocado going into a bowl. I'm gonna make a very simple guacamole, but you can zhuzh this up however you like. Uh, I'll put the second half of the avocado in there as soon as I make my fold on my quesadilla. So just like a book, you're gonna take the cover and fold it over so it's completely distributed. It's okay to use a finger, just be safe. I'm gonna turn it over just to see what it looks like on that side. So I get my spatula underneath there and I do a quick little flip. Oh, some stuff fell out. I got good color on this one. Ooh, I really like that. I think it's ready to come off the pan. And I can make my third quesadilla. Everybody in the Sauvage household is excited about having a quesadilla today. So I'm gonna make enough for everyone to enjoy. What are you using for your toppings? Let me know. Are you gonna make some chopped up tomatoes and onions and peppers and make a salsa to go on top? Are you gonna make a gu uh, guacamole just like me? I know some of you really love making the guacamole, so I hope I see some guacamole in the pictures that you submit today. All right, don't forget my little tiny bit of oil, but my pan is already pretty well seasoned. Okay, tortillas that are not coming apart here. There we go. So a little bit more oil.
There we go. Use my brush, the pastry brush. Don't use a paint brush, so it will burn. Tortilla goes on, whole cheese all over. Some of you tuned in a little bit after we started, so I'm just doing a little repetition to get everybody on the same page. Cheese all over, then toppings on half. I'm doing corn and black beans. Some of you are doing meats. Some of you are doing just cheese. That's okay. All right, so this is really, really starting to cook now. So I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. Back to my guacamole. Just a reminder lesson, because we did this once before. Cut my avocado into slices, make dices, scoop it out into the pan. And then I'm gonna mash it with some lemon juice. So I've got lemon here. I'm gonna hold it with my claw grip. I'm going to mark it with just a slight little cut into my lemon. And then as soon as I have my knife anchored into that lemon, I'm gonna push forward to get that cut in half. I like to use my lemon juice squeezer. You take the flat side of the lemon and put it into the squeezer. But you could also just use your hands. And then for the salt and pepper, I'm gonna do a ratio of two to one. So about four cranks of salt to a pepper. And then to mash it, you can use a fork. This is called a pastry cutter. We use this pastry cutter when we made scones, but it's equally good for mashing avocados. So I'm gonna get this all mashed up. One important thing, when you're making a sauce from scratch, like guacamole or salsa, you give it a taste and you make sure that it has enough salt and pepper. So I'm gonna give this a little bit of a taste. Mmm, I love it. It's lemony. I really like that lemon. Now again, you can put in garlic powder, fresh garlic, chopped onions. Uh, you could put in chopped tomatoes. A lot of people like that chopped tomatoes. Look at my quesadilla. How does it look like yours? Does it look, does yours look better than mine? I wanna see them. There it is, melty. So now I can peek and I see a golden, beautiful golden brown crust there. So now I can fold from side to side the cheesy top over the filled top. Press it down. And then I'm gonna put it on my cutting board. I'm making three quesadillas today, but you guys keep on going because you might have some adults that are hungry in your house, some siblings that you'd wanna make lunch for. So here's my quesadilla. I've got three that I made. Let me give you, give you a little bit better shot of what I'm gonna make them look like because presentation is everything when it comes to food. People eat with their eyes. They wanna see really pretty food and it's fun to take pictures of your food. So here we go. I've got, <laughs> I've got uh, my very fancy and exotic quesadilla here. Beautiful cheese melt here. I'm just gonna give these like a little bit of a stack. My husband's been taking Gordon Ramsay's classes on MasterChef, so he has been really passionate about how the food looks. Fresh herbs are a great way to make your food look great. I think I'm gonna do something different though. I'm gonna do it like this. So I've got my cutting board, my quesadillas all filling it up. And then I'm gonna put my guacamole here so my family can just come down and have lunch. They're gonna be so excited. 
I mean, isn't it nice when someone makes lunch for you? Usually it's something you just have to grab and go on your own. But I have the best quesadilla, cheesy, melty, gooey, crispy crust, toppings that, uh, fillings that I like. Um, you fill yours how you like them at home. And then I have some delicious homemade guacamole. Now, please take a picture of your quesadillas. Post them on our Kids Cook Along page. I wanna see how creative you got with your, um, with your inventions. And then I'm gonna pick a winner. And the winner's gonna get a $10 gift card. So it's kind of fun to get a little something um, just for um, learning how to cook. Um, I also have an Instagram account. If you ever want to check it out, it's at Family Farm Box. I post lots of recipes, lots of pictures of the food that I'm making. I make food for my clients. I'm a caterer as well as a cooking teacher. So I hope that you will check it out. Let me know if you have any other questions before we go ahead and log off and have a delicious day. I hope you enjoy your quesadillas. Thanks so much and I'll see you next week. Bye. I gotta finish the...